Medieval monasteries. Augustine and the men who went with him to Britain were monks, men who had promised to spend the rest of their lives praying, working, and studying the Bible, rather than marrying and having children. Monks lived together in special buildings called monasteries. They went to church eight times a day to pray and worship God. During the day, they worked in the monastery garden, helped with the cooking, cleaning, and laundry, and did other jobs that the abbot, the chief monk, gave them to do. There were monasteries all through the old lands of the Roman Empire, in Italy, Spain, Africa, and all the other countries that had once belonged to Rome. When the Anglo-Saxons learned about Christianity, some of them wanted to be monks too, so they built monasteries in England and in Ireland where they could live just like other monks did. Brother Andrew is a monk in an Irish monastery. His job is to build furniture in the monastery workshop. The monks make all their own chairs, tables, and beds. This morning, Brother Andrew is working on building a new table for the refectory, the large room where the monks eat together. He is rubbing oil into the table's top to finish it, but he keeps stopping to blow on his fingers. He is cold. The workshop is in a stone shed, and there's a fireplace in one wall, but the December wind is blowing around the windows and in under the door, and it's still very dark outside because the sun hasn't risen yet. He is working by candlelight, and his eyes hurt. Brother Andrew hopes that the bell will ring soon to summon him to the refectory. He got up at two o'clock this morning for the early morning service and then went on to his workshop to get started on the day's tasks. It must be nearly five o'clock by now, he thinks. Almost breakfast time. Finally, the bell rings. Brother Andrew puts on a heavy cloak and hood and walks toward the refectory. On his way, he passes a line of sick and hungry people who have already formed outside the monastery gates. Brother James knows a lot about herbs and about healing sickness. He is the only doctor within three days' journey, and villagers from several small villages nearby come up to the monastery whenever they get sick. The monks cook food for the hungry, too, and serve it even before they eat themselves. The sun is just beginning to come up when Brother Andrew steps into the refectory. He can smell the fresh wheat bread that's been baked for breakfast. The monks aren't allowed to eat butter on their bread unless it's Christmas or another special day. And the rules of the monastery say that no one can eat the meat of a four-legged animal. So sausage, bacon, and beef are never on the breakfast table. But he likes the thick, crusty brown bread. And this morning there are cooked beans and peas and a few sweet, withered apples, the last of the fall harvest, kept in a cool dirt cellar until now. Monks aren't allowed to talk at meals. Instead, Brother John reads to them from the Bible while they eat in silence. But Brother Andrew whispers to the monk next to him, How did your pupils behave yesterday? Terribly, the monk whispers back. He teaches in the monastery school where village children are sent to be educated. They don't want to learn how to write. Every time I turn my back, they whisper and giggle to each other. They don't pay any attention to me at all, and they drew a rude picture of me on the slate when I had to go out for a few minutes. Brother John hears the whispering and glares over at them. Brother Andrew finishes his breakfast and waits until the abbot, the monk who runs the whole monastery, prays. He goes back to his workshop to finish his table. It is a beautiful piece of furniture. He knows he shouldn't be proud of it, but he carves... Andrew, his work, on the underside of the table, in tiny, tiny letters. Maybe one day, someone will see the letters and know that Brother Andrew made this table with his own hands.